Yo, what's going on everybody? Kylan here. Today, we're going to be starting a brand new project. This project is going to be a full stack project and it's going to have a little bit of a uh, new vibe to it. Basically, what I mean by that is that I am going to be learning a brand new technology right in front of your eyes. Um, I have for about a year or so now been using MongoDB as my oh hi kitty I've been using uh, MongoDB as my main database um, of choice and uh, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit I'm gonna try to learn how to write SQL code um, so without further ado let's get into it today's project we're gonna start with is going to be uh, Twitter Twitter uh, is a very popular um, social media platform um, and I'm not going to be able to fully recreate Twitter. Um, Twitter's got hundreds of uh, developers working on it constantly, millions of uh, daily active users, so I'm not going to be able to fully recreate Twitter, but uh, I'm going to try to get the main functionality. the uh, the login page and also the uh, dashboard page where you can view all your tweets um, view all of uh, everybody else's tweets that you follow or whatever um, be able to create a new tweet um, and then maybe we'll uh, dive into some uh, user settings. By the way, this is my Twitter. Go ahead and, uh, you, if you want, you can go ahead and follow me at Kylan underscore Evans. Um, but anyway, let's get started in the development process. We are going to be using um, Node.js, uh, more precisely Express, for server routing. Um, like I said, we're going to try to use SQL. Uh, we'll see how well that goes. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so to get started, we're going to um, create us a new folder. This is where we're going to put all of our stuff at. And let's call it uh, Twitter uh, clone. Yeah, let's, that works. Go into that directory. First thing I want to do is I want to uh, open a terminal. Um, I want to I want to be able to push it to github so you can track the progress and all that other stuff I'll try to push after every video, but we'll see we'll see how it goes So uh, first thing I want to do is do a git init um, That'll initialize a new git repository. There's the dot git folder right there um, After that uh, Let's see, we want to uh, we'll open this in code. Uh, that. No, I don't want to save. New file, we're going to do an index.js file. Um, Alright, we've got our index.js file. Let's go back to here. Um, Next, we want to uh, we want to go to the web. So let's uh, let's go to npmjs.com. So here we're gonna need uh, we're gonna need Express. Um, go ahead and grab that. We're also going to need. Let's see, what else are we going to need? Um, I'm going to be using uh, EJS as my template engine. Um, so we'll change, or we're not going to change anything. We'll uh, add that to, um, and then we're going to use EJS Mate, um, basically, so I can um, embed templates into uh, my boilerplate. Um, makes it much easier to. Uh, with multiple pages so I don't have to worry about all the other boilerplate code so we'll do EJS mate um, what else am I gonna need I'm going to need uh, let's see 
Let's go to here. Whoops. Uh, we're going to do that. Let's see here. So we will use um, bcrypt. bcrypt. We're going to use bcrypt for um, encrypting. Um, encrypting um, like uh, passwords and stuff. If I can learn to talk here, so we'll install bcrypt. Um, <clears throat> then, what else are we going to need? Uh, we will need a flash, and some people like to use Express Flash. I personally like to use Connect Flash. It works with Express just fine. So, uh... So this way we can uh, flash messages uh, as needed. I'm sure there's some functionality like that in Twitter. So we'll do uh, connect uh, flash. Um, after that, uh, let's see here. Um, we need... What else do we need here? Um, we need a session, um, so we'll do express session. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, grab that. Express session. Um, let's see here. What else do we need? Um, package called method override. This allows us to um, override di uh, different uh, methods so that we can have full CRUD functionality. Well, even the work. Work. Oh, there it is. Um, this allows us to override methods so we can have full CRUD functionality because for whatever reason, um, web pages uh, uh, forms by default don't allow you to send anything other than a get request or a post request um, so this will allow us to send uh, post requests um, to use other HTTP verbs such as you know put delete uh, patch other d different um, verbs other than that so we'll send it as a uh, post request on the front end once it gets to the back end um, if it has a uh, override method attached to it in the URL string um, we will be able to uh, override that on the back end so that we can use proper HTTP verbs um, so we'll do we'll do that we'll add that to our packages Method override. Um, let's see, what else do we need? Uh, we're going to be using Passport for uh, authentication and authorization. So, Passport, um, we'll use that. Um, we'll go ahead and add that to our uh, list. And we're also going to need to use Passport Local. Um, for local usernames, local authentication, so you can uh, sign up directly with the site. Um, so we'll go ahead and add that pass port dash local. Um, and then I'm sure with Twitter, uh, let's see here. Let's log out for a second. Yes, I want to log out. Um, yeah, so it looks like you can sign up with Google or you can sign up with Apple. Um, and then you can also sign up with your email or phone, which that would be a local Twitter account. Um, so we'll be able to sign up with email or phone um, with Passport Local. And then what are 
passport. Let's go to. Let's actually go to the Passport JS website. We can see all the different strategies that they use. So we could sign assign in with Facebook, uh, Google OAuth, um, Google OAuth authentication strategy for Passport, OAuth platform authentication for. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. OAuth 2. There's Passport Local. Um, Google OAuth 2.0 authentication strategy for Passport. Um, so, let's see. I don't know if I want to. We'll go with uh, Passport Google OAuth 2 and then. Um, Google um, Open ID authentication strategy for passport. Google One Tap. Google One Tap authentication strategy. What's that? Um, you must register an application with uh, with Google. If you have not already done so, a new project can be created. Um, the Google Developers Console. Your application will be issued a client ID and client secret which needs to be provided to the strategy okay so it looks like <clears throat> okay let's see let's close that out. let's let's check this out passport is yeah, I know that. Open off. Uh, this is a meta module that combines Google uh, OAuth 1 and Passport Google OAuth 2. It exists for backwards compatibility with applications, making use of the combined package. Um, so I would assume that would be the one we want, would be my guess. Um, OAuth 2, the module lets you authenticate with Google using your Node.js application by plugging it, uh, plugging into Passport, Google authentication can be easily and unobtrusively, I can't read more the crap, um, integrated into an, any application or framework that supports connect style middleware using Express. <clears throat> Let's see here, so... So we would do passport.use new Google strategy. Um, the client ID, which uh, would be the Google client ID. Authenticate users using a Google account and OAuth 2.0 tokens. Uh, the strategy requires a verify callback which accepts those credentials and calls done providing a user as well as options specifying a client ID uh, client secret and callback URL so So let's uh, let's worry about that later. Um, we'll uh, come back to that. Um, I just want to see if it has one for Apple as well. Yes, it does. Um, important note: Apple will only provide you with one with the name and email once. Uh, 
which is when the user taps sign in with Apple on your first on your app the first time keep in mind that you have to store this in your database at this time all right enough of that so um, before we install our packages we're going to need to um, do uh, npm init and we need to initialize the uh, npm repository and then I'll just do attack y skip all the uh, other crap and we should see not that package.json file now we should be able to minimize that and these are all of our packages that we're going to install right now so we'll go ahead and uh, hit enter on that wait for that to finish up alright looks good alright now we can start getting into the code so uh, we're going to do a new file index.js and first thing we want to do is start express require express um, app is equal to express and then we also need a port is equal to 8080 I like to use 8080 um, some people use 3000 I like 8080 um, so next we need to um, we need to start our we need to start listening on our port so app dot listen we'll do an app dot listen um, uh, on port and we will console dot log console.log listening on port port alright now we should be able to <coughs> over here site cannot be reached uh, that's right because I have not started the server yet so let's pull up our command prompt in the uh, in the folder so I'm gonna be using uh, something called nodemon you could just use do uh, node index.js but it wouldn't every time you save your changes you have to completely restart your server manually um, so like if I change something in here app.get slash and then I send um, or response dot send um, <clears throat> Welcome to the home page. See that server hasn't restarted, uh, even though I made changes. And what we're gonna, what we would get over here, we wouldn't get that response. Either. We wouldn't get that response um, if I restarted the server. If I restarted the server, oops, and then I tried it again. Now we get welcome to the home page. So I will be using Nodemon, and it's Nodemon is just a package that you can install from the npm uh, website. Um, so yeah we should be able to we should be good to start actually writing some code um, let's see here yeah let's uh, 
Let's see, we need to get, um, we need to get a couple of the base, um, middleware from Express Setup. So, let's go over here. Um, let's see, so we need, um, we need to go to Express. Express.js. Go to here. on the application so we'll do go to app.use the app.use middleware mm. all right so we should be able to um, go over to here let's do an app dot use um, express dot static path dot join directory name with uh, public public all right let's create a new folder called public and then inside of that folder we'll create another folder called CSS and we'll new folder called uh, JS alright uh, we'll create a styles.css folder alright <clears throat> Where did this come from? It's not supposed to be there. Alright, so now, let's see. <coughs> now I should be able to create a folder called Views. Set uh, views. So we'll do app dot dot set. Views. And we'll, we'll join the path name with views. Alright, and then we'll do an app dot set. We also need the view engine. So let's see. View. View. Engine.
few engine. Gonna be using Jade, we're gonna be using VJS. <clears throat> so now, when I respond with a uh, respond to a request with a view, I don't have to specify the dot EJS extension. Um, so <clears throat> let's just create a new file in the views directory called index dot EJS, and we also need to go back to here. And um, <clears throat> app dot engine. Where's that at? Right over here. All right. So what we need to is equal to require EJS um, grab that package out and then app dot engine gonna be EJS all right looks like a callback is required for that I think So let's see. Let's see if we can get a page to respond with here. Um, so if we go to um, res dot uh, render, uh, we're not passing anything in yet. We'll uh, render index. Um, Dot EJS, which should automatically um, take the views like this, the relative path to the current working directory, and slap one slash views to the end of it, and then inside of that it should find an index file, um, and we're already specifying our view engine as EJS. So. <clears throat> let us um, see let's see if uh, what be the issue now Path is not defined. Oh, that's right. I need to uh, let's see here. Express path. Express JS path. Routing express JS path. Serving static files in Express. Here we go. I've done this a hundred times, but I can never remember. All right, here. Cons path equals require path. Um, yeah, there we go. We'll copy that. Now let's see what else uh, it's complaining about. Not that.
callback function is required for what? Is it the Is it the App engine maybe uh, application in here See digital ocean here. Let's see. Maybe it's callback function is required. Oh, da da. There we go. Now we're getting um, that file served. I can't remember what app.engine is used for. Um, I know I need that at some point. Let's just remove that for now. <clears throat> Man. The early setup is probably the hardest part to remember because you do it once every app and that's about it so now we should be able to go in here Oops. Let's just do this um, main main tag, and we'll have a div all right we'll have a class of main and then we'll go over here dot main and we'll set height to be a hundred view height width to be 100 view width and we'll set the background color to red all right and then let's go back over here and that 
that's because I'm in the head I want to create a link tag it would be so it'll serve the public directory so it would be uh, CSS slash styles.css and there we go there's our red background so it is serving that um, that static file fantastic so <clears throat> Alright, so we first thing we want to do in the views folder, we want to create a new folder um, called uh, what we call it? We're calling it layout. Yeah, and then a new file called boilerplate.ejs. Right. Why is all right? Well, I don't know why. Uh, why this stuff isn't working? Um, so we'll see. Just do an HTML tag, and we'll have a head tag, and we we'll also have a uh, body tag. And oops. inside the head tag, we'll have a link to the style sheet. So CSS um, slash uh, styles dot CSS. All right, and then in here we want the. Let's see here. Um, yep, right here. Just copying this from the documentation on the uh, on the EJS Mate uh, website. So, that's what I'm messing up. That's what it is. Forgot about that. Completely forgot about that. engine is equal to require EGS dash mate uh, could not find declaration file that doesn't matter um, and then app dot engine um, EJS we'll do EJS and we'll do engine that's what it's used for I completely forgot about that alright now that should Hopefully it works. Let's I don't know why this closed out. Let's CD to this directory right here. There we go. That is working. Now let's see if we can pull up uh, this, but instead of having this here, we'll do, um, oh, what's the tag? Layout slash boilerplate. That 
that should work like that, I believe. And yes, so that's still working uh, just fine. Okay, so we close that out. Um, <clears throat> Margin zero, whoops, margin zero, padding zero. That didn't work. Don't know why. Let's pull up this. That's no errors there. Um, What in the world is going on? Like, why? I'm no freaking clue. Okay, maybe I'm just an idiot. HTML. Margin, margin, zero, padding, zero. There we go. It is working. Okay. So, let's cut that out. All right, we'll do a star and star to selector before and star super selector after that way we have zero margin zero padding on to start out with all right and then we can get rid of this Alright, now that we've got our view and everything set up, let's start, um, let's start getting this, uh, this web, this web page started. So, let's, let's see here. So, let's do this. Remember, mobile first, so, uh, it looks like... They've got this at what about a little over a thousand pixels wide on my screen at least. Looks like it's about a 60-40 split. So and then once you bring it down, once it hits about Ten seventeen, it looks like. Um, we'll uh, bring it down to the mobile version. So let's let's get started with this. Um, so let's see here. Let's. Uh, I remember I'm not using this for anything other than. Uh, learning purposes, educational purposes only, so um, I'm not going to be making any money off of this. It's going to go to my GitHub. I might uh, create a domain of some sort uh, at the end um, to host it on, but other than that, uh, I'm not using it for anything other than educational purposes, so um, let's see. So we want, we need the SVG logo 
So. <clears throat> Let's pull up. Let's pull up Inkscape here. Here's your document. And so. Import. Actually, no. We'll do. Where in here can I add just. XML editor. I. I'm not a designer, I do not know anything about um, I do not know anything about designing. Uh, let's see here. What in the world? Close without saving. Oops. Okay. Twitter. Logo SVG. White. Let's see here. <coughs> Let's just do this. Copy this and let's just paste it there. I do not know anything about designing. Not a designer whatsoever. So how do I save this?
<laughs> I mean, I know I could put this directly in the HTML. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff though, and it's a really big file. Okay, well that makes sense. Whoops. Let's go here. So, okay, so let's go back over here, we'll put in an image tag, so the source will be icons, um, you can see I can create an icons folder in the public directory, so it'll be icons slash logo underscore white but SVG and it's not I don't think it's going to be white by default it'll be uh, let's do this background color class of logo alright and then and then on the logo class we will create uh, we'll make it <coughs> height of 50 pixels and a width of 50 pixels all right it's starting to show up now um but i'm not actually seeing the icon show up Oh, wow. 
wait. Okay. It's not at all what I wanted. Let's, let's put it inside a dev here. It's probably the smartest play. Logo container. Pixels. Width of fifty pixels. We'll move that. And it's gone. Maybe I'm a complete idiot. Okay, so basically what I did was I opened it up with, I opened up the white logo that we got from the Twitter website um, with Inkscape. I don't know what information it needed, but it had opened up perfectly fine with Inkscape. And then I just uh, hit file and then hit save as, and I saved it as black because that's the default of it, <clears throat> is black. So, <clears throat> let's see here. So, let's, Alright, so let's see here. Let's go to styles and let's change the background color to black. Oops. Change that to black and then let's go. I think there's a way in CSS to invert the color of an image. SVG. CSS, 
change color of image CSS. Is it just uh, fill? To filter to a specific color, use the following code pen to convert the hex code, hex color code to a CSS filter. Okay. is okay so the CSS filter will be this let's uh So I just added the filter tag and copied this. Um, let's see if that makes any difference. And did it? I did. Oh, it's back to that again. Let's change that back. Okay, so. Okay. I don't know what I did, but I did it. <laughs> Sounds about right. Alright, so. Is this a true black or is this a slightly off black color? Like the background let's whoops that's not what I want to do at all <clears throat> okay so um, is this background let's see here Looks like it's just a black. So let's. It is a true black. So we'll keep the background as black. Um, now is the Twitter icon a true white? No, it is not.
Alright, so we got that there. Now let's see. Let's see, we have about 50 and 75. So it'd be 50 pixels from the left, 75 from the top. Is that accurate? Looks like it's in a container. That's about 200 and it goes to about 600. So the container is at a max width of 400 pixels. Yeah, let's say the max, we'll say the max width is 450 pixels. I don't know. Yeah, so on the main container, we'll create a class called um, container. Alright, and then we'll set the min height to 100 view height. That way we can add um, that way we can add footer at the bottom, um, and no matter how much information is on the screen, it should always, as long as I have a container, that container, the minimum height will always be at least a hundred, hundred percent of the viewing height. Um, and then, let's see here, we want... So we'll set the minimum width to be 450 pixels. Alright, and then we'll add the dot container class on here. Container. background color of black there we go so then it looks like inside of that container we have another container about 25 pixels of padding all the way around I would say so We'll do a main wrapper um, and then we'll do a margin of 25 pixels right and that should push everything they should push 25 pixels of margin all the way around so let's see what that looks like real quick did absolutely nothing oh that's because I didn't apply the main wrapper to anything I see I see I see noob mistake noob mistake all right um, we will do we'll do a section because um, we can split this um, into the let's see We can set separate into three sections. So it'd be this top part here. Oh, I hope if I can show you, it would be we can split it into three sections. This top part here, um, then the logo, the Twitter logo with the weird looking background, and then the footer as well. Um, and then the footer will also the uh, these will be three separate sections, but these two sections um, will be inside of the container and then the footer can be outside of the container we'll figure that out once we get there but um, 
Yeah, we'll, uh... Create that section. Oops. Save that. And it would help if I added a class of main wrapper. That is not what I wanted. I want padding. I don't want I don't want margin, I want padding. There we go. Now we've got that Twitter logo that's pushed in a little bit. Let's make the logo a little bit bigger. Maybe 50 by 50. That looks better. Looks a lot closer to the actual thing. Alright. Let's move this over here. So. Before we go any further, let's because it looks like uh, let me pull this up here. I would assume that the text is different. What a surprise! Text is slightly off from the logo color. What a surprise. So, of course, that's a different color as well. We'll just make it. We'll just make it a slight off-white and call it a day, cause, yeah. Alright, so we'll take this color here, what is this color, this color right here. Alright, and then we'll make that as our white text. So let's do, let's see here, let's do a root element, oops, uh, we will do a primary text. that color primary text and then we also need the we also need this blue color so let's zero clue what color Twitter actually uses so we're gonna copy that and we're gonna come over here and make this called Twitter blue sounds about right and don't to add that there okay so we've got those So now, let's see here. So let's, uh, So I need to increase the padding from the top. That's my issue there. Um, so down here, main wrapper, we'll do 
75 by 25 pixels, right? just off so let's look at them side by side here yeah. all right so Seventy-five pixels a little too much, so let's do. Let's just bring it down to fifty. That's not what I wanted. That's a little bit better. I should be looking at from the top, so that'd be the more more like thirty-five pixels. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. Then maybe... What is that? 35 as well, maybe? Let's try that. Uh, did that move at all? No, it did not. Why did that not move? close enough we'll call it close enough all right <clears throat> Basically the exact same spot. I think mine's slightly bigger. Anyway, so next thing we need to worry about is this container here. Um, that it would be. Let's get back over to the code. All right, so we got the logo container, and then we've got. Um, each one of you know, for self gym doesn't work. All right, so we'll do happening now. And let's refresh that. Um, 
and then we'll set the dot text color um, and we will use that this color right here so we'll do a color of var oops not color var primary text So we need to make that text make a title class um, call this here the title um, sure we'll have something else that we can add that class to as well um, so we'll make that font size th uh, 1.5 gram to it. Maybe. There we go. Let's make it uh, three rim. Okay. That looks about the right size. Now I don't know what um, I don't know what font they use. I might have to cheat on that. Let's see. Font family. Uh, font size. Font family do they use? So they have a base font on the HTML document that is a 14 pixel. Okay. So, but what font family do they use? What font does Twitter use? Android apps on Twitter use Roboto font. iOS apps uh, use San Francisco font. Twitter's Mac version adopts the whatever that is. <clears throat> okay, so they have different fonts based on the... based on the operating system okay so okay so I feel like we could just use the We're not making an Android app, we're not making an iOS app. 
Um, I guess we'll just use the Windows version and then fall back on uh, Sans Serif, I think, is the default. ultimate list of the ultimate list of web safe HTML and CSS fonts okay serif fonts contain serif small director strokes that produce uh, protrude from the main body of the letter yeah so sans serifs can be the default. Okay, so let's go to, no, nope, go away. Let's go and get some Google Fonts. Google Fonts. Fonts.google.com. And what was it that, uh, what font does Twitter use? Uh, Arial and or whatever that is. We'll search that. Uh, wait, no, that's, that's not what I want. So, we'll just use the Roboto font, how about that? That'll work for me. So let's uh, get a light, let's get a regular, and then let's get a 700 bold and the 900 bold. Um, that into our boilerplate code so let's do this here yep 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 all right and then we'll copy that um, on Save that, and then we'll do the HTML document font family. We'll do that. Oh, okay then. All right, and let's watch it change in real time. There we go. It's close enough. I'm not too concerned about it. Font size, 14 pixels. <clears throat> okay. All right, so what I did here, um, I added an HTML tag that has the font family um, I added uh, there's links to my boilerplate so this will be included in every uh, r response um, and then I added the font family and the uh, font size 
specified at 14 pixels and then I'm going to change the font size to I think four rems yes that looks better um, so and then let's do some margin and then I want I don't want any margin on the left or the right but I want it on the top and the bottom so let's do uh, what is that 75 there to 150 so it'd be 75 pixels there let's just do 75 on either side or 75 and 0 that way we can there we go and I think as it gets bigger to about the 575 ish area it gets uh, I would assume the scale of everything just goes up so instead of um, over here where we specified font size of 14 once it gets to a uh, specific width um, it go that goes up to like 20 or something like that we'll play with that whenever we uh, get to the um, bringing it up to a uh, desktop size but right now we're just focused on the um, we're just focused on the mobile version right now so so we'll uh, let's see here. All right, and then we'll uh, add another div for the. For this text right here, join Twitter today. We'll have. I should probably put the entire form. So, like this entire section inside of one div. Um, yeah, we could probably do that. So, let's do another div of uh, with an H2 join Twitter today a period at the end all right join Twitter today um, we'll save that swap over here and we'll add the class of text color to it and we'll refresh that there we go very nice <clears throat> maybe we mm, bring down that padding just a little or that margin just a little bit maybe we do um, 60 pixels let's try that a little bit better I mean I know the font is off but all right so let's let's create let's go over here to create a subtitle um, We've got the uh, title, which is Join Twitter Today, or Happening Now, that's the title. Um, and then the subtitle is Join Twitter Today. So we'll change the font size to 
two room, maybe. Let's see how that looks. Uh, let's try changing it to three room. Actually, I'm making more noob mistakes again, as always. <clears throat> we need to add the subtitle to this. I always forget that class. I always forget that class. Now, refresh. That looks better. It's not perfect, but you know, it works. So how does this respond? Hmm. It looks like this. looks like this yeah this whole thing has is the same width no matter what size we go to so yeah we'll Keep it all at 4.30, so that way we can keep track of everything. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, this has probably got a minimum width of... I would say whatever the width of that for that container is, so it would be 350. 350 pixels. Yeah, so let's go back to let's go back here to the code and We'll change that to 350 as the min width. See how that looks. Okay, so. So, <clears throat> yeah, that looks good on the okay. So then next. We want to class of um, now this div here, like I said before, we are going to put all of this stuff, um, this entire section here, inside of one div. Um, uh, basically, the uh, 
the sign in slash sign up section. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that and then, yeah, that'll work good. Um, sign in slash sign up section. Um, okay, so we'll have a class on that. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about this stuff, these two right here. I'll focus on this. I'll, I'll, I'll keep, uh, I'll make the buttons for it, but I'm not going to add the back end logic for it right now. <coughs> um, so let's, uh, let's go over here and we'll create a class on this. It'll be, uh, Um, what we call, want to call it login sign up um, um, because <clears throat> I think yeah we'll we'll, we'll do um, Sign in or sign up button container. Yeah, so we'll do that that way. And then <clears throat> because I'm pretty sure if we hit I'm pretty sure if we hit the sign up I think yes this is just a uh, a modal um, so and then if we hit sign in this also is just a modal yeah I've done modals before so yeah we'll uh, we'll create those buttons um, <clears throat> And then okay, so the sign up that's not spelled right. C O N T A I N E R. There we go. We'll copy that. Sign up button container. All right, and then we'll go down here to under the logos. And actually, instead of that, we'll add, we'll change that to display of flex. Class of flex dir for flex direction flex direction uh, column. All right, and we'll add those two classes to this here um, d dash flex and flex dash dir. All right, so now if we inspect our page here. We should have, yes, uh, so the entire, everything inside of that container is now a flex column, um, which is good, which is good. All right, um, so now we need a button, two buttons, and then we need a horizontal rule with an or in the middle, and then we need a third button. So let's make these two buttons. Um, Let's do a another div. Whoops. Not a div, a div. 
um, button, uh, whoops, that's not at all what I wanted to do, so let's do, <clears throat> so this is inside of This, this will be the Google sign up button. All right, and then we'll copy this down. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. And we'll make this the Apple sign up button. So if we refresh that, and there are the buttons. All right. We'll add a class called um, main or home button spacing that'll have the spacing for the buttons um, let's see so it looks like there to there it's about 30 pixels ish pixels so let's call that um, I don't want padding I want margin my R G I N um, Let's do 0.15 rems. See how that looks. And of course, I've got to add this to the a class here. Oops. Of that. And we'll add another class here. Spacing. Let's do a 0 0.25 rem, and let's see how that looks. Eh. 0 0.5 rem. That looks a little bit. I would say that's a little better. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then the um, width. Let's make that a hundred percent of the parent container. Okay. So that should be. Yeah. For now, that extends that far. So. So we want to get rid of we want to get rid of the default stuff on the button. So let's call it a mega class called dot btn. This will remove all the default stuff. So 
Um, let's add that to the buttons so we can play around with that. Button, button, um, and then so we'll make the border radius. Um, let's do let's start out with 24 pixels. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Not bad. I think that's close to what they've got there. Well, we'll keep that like that for now. Um, <clears throat> then we want to remove all of. I think buttons by default have an outline. If I am not mistaken. Let's see here. So, button by default. Cursor default uh, border. We can remove the border. So we'll set uh, border to none. We'll refresh that. Okay. Um, color, letter spacing normal. Um, Color of button text, whatever that is. Okay. So <clears throat> I thought buttons had an outline by default. That's not what I wanted. I thought buttons had an outline by default, but I guess not. Uh, it's just a border. All right, so we've added those button classes. Um, now, do these buttons change in height? No, it does not look like it. So we can set a height of, let's see, can we do, can we get away with 50 pixels, maybe? Let's try that. Um, So let's do uh, height oh, height of 50 pixels. Uh, it's a little big. Let's do 40 pixels. See how that looks. Change that over here. So yeah, that looks somewhat better. Very similar. Okay, so all right, so we'll call that good for now. We'll add some later. Let's actually add a yeah. Let's add the we could add a hover effect to it. Let's do that. Let's do the hover
kind of hover effect do they have? Is that just like a graying out a little bit? Like just adding a little bit of transparency to it? Let's try that. So let's do dot btn hover um uh, uh, let's do um background color uh, is there a way to just change the transparency change background transparency CSS opacity that's it that's exactly what I'm looking for opacity um, so we'll do oops, opacity and I think the opacity is between 0 and 1 so we'll do a 0 point Eight and let's see. Let's see how that looks. Maybe they have it a little bit more subtle. Zero point nine opacity. Yeah, that looks better. Um, and then on the button, we're gonna also just add. Uh, on the button, we'll just also add a cursor to pointer. Um, that way, whenever we hover over a button, it changes to pointer. I'm actually going to take that off of the button class and just put it on the button hover class. I don't think it really matters, but. I'm sure there's a circumstance where I will be regretting that if I don't. Okay. All right, there's that done. And let's see here. Now let's do um, <clears throat> another div. And <clears throat> inside of this div, we're gonna have the this. So this looks like a horizontal rule that goes about 45% and then you have the OR span and then another horizontal rule that spans about 45%. So let's do inside of this div container, let's create a um, horizontal rule. And then we'll do a span or and then we'll put another horizontal roll. Let's see how let's see what that looks like on the page. And we can play with it as needed. Okay, so Let's do. Let's remove. All right. So, uh, hmm. so it spanned the whole page. Um, so I'm assuming horizontal rules are by default block level items. Would be my guess. Um, yeah, display of block. If I can show you that here it's display the horizontal rule as a display of block so let's change that let's add a class called inline and a class
pass called inline. Um, and then we'll go over here and dot inline um, display inline. And that did not display whatsoever like I wanted it to do. Let's try inline block. I always get confused with inline, inline block. Okay, so let's do a forty five and we'll do a width of forty five here. We'll take that, save that, take that over here to a width of 45. Um, do a width of 45%. There we go. <clears throat> so. See, I don't like the uh, now that I'm looking at it the buttons look a little off so to fix that we can go to we can go to the, where it says we'll add a class called We'll do a dot align center. Um, align items uh, center. And we'll add that to the buttons. Uh, not that, but this. Align center. Center and uh, that's not what I want. There we go. We'll do a dot justify uh, center center justify content center. Center and we'll do and that's still not working. Why is that not working? <sighs> um need to go here. I'm just gonna do the justify center and see if that works. And that's a negative. If it's so we've got a column so the main axis is this way. 
cross axis is this way. That is not whatsoever what I wanted to happen. <clears throat> Let's, uh, Okay, just remove that. Okay, let's figure this out here. Uh, let's, that's what's messing it up. That's what mess is messing it up. Um, the margin on it, duh. <clears throat> Let's go back to the button. Margin zero. Wait, I did this all wrong. I want to... <clears throat> um, if we look here... Um, this button... Yeah, it's not aligned with... It's not centered with, uh, so yeah, I need to add a, um, center tag here, or a width tag, a width tag here, um, because the button spacing, yeah, so I, instead of adding it to the button, I need to add it to the, I need to add it to, God, what do I always hit, like, clicking that button. Um, so, home button spacing, width of 100%, margin of, okay, so that's where the margin's coming from. Um, and at zero on the edges. Okay, yeah, there we go. Let's see what happens when I remove that from these and we actually add it to the divs. Wait, what? Okay, hang on. That was no, not what I want. That. Class, classic, no, a class of that. And that just freaked everything up. So let's just undo all that. Save that. It looks like the margin fixed it for the most part. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then we'll on the span we'll add a class of what 
was that class? What was that? The color of the text? Text dash color. I want to make this a display equals class of d dash flex. So I changed the So we're gonna go to and we're gonna make a grab the horizontal uh height of one pixel all horizontal rules. And then goodness. Maybe instead of horizontal rules, maybe I just do Do a border top solid one pixel uh, FF, 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 FF. Zero, zero 0.25 pixels. I can't do less than a pixel. Why would I even try that? And then let's see here. Do a align center. All right, perfect. Let's go here. Justify center as well. That way it's centered. Um, and then uh, I want to add a little bit of padding 
to that span. So, let's go. That's not what I want to do. Or text. There we go. Good enough. Um, let's do some padding um, on all sides of 0 0.2 rem. See how that looks. Uh, refresh that. Looks a little bit better. Uh, let's do a 0 0.2. Five rem. That looks decent. It looks like it's almost it's just about the same width as that. But as you get bigger, which you know it doesn't really matter, it's more noticeable that it's not actually the same width. So let's uh, play around with that a little bit. <clears throat> Let's go to <clears throat> let's go to it was W forty five, so let's change that to forty seven. 47, 47, yeah, that should be a little bit better. Yeah, it's still noticeable at like wider widths, but let's just do 49. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. All right. <clears throat> and with that, I think I'm gonna call that a day. Um, we will finish up uh, the homepage styles and everything uh, next video. And um, then we'll start working on some backend logic with that. Um, so I guess that's it for now. Have a great day.